recognize that I'm preaching before unicorns. <laughs> and there's some unicorn toys over here. <laughs> I like Renaissance fairs. If you know me, you know I like history. I like I like Star Trek conventions. <laughs> I like people that express their love for one another through baking. <laughs> I like people who can play musical instruments. <laughs> I play the radio. I like these things because they are filled with creativity and a unique joy. There is a certain singular happiness that comes in a well-prepared Klingon outfit. <laughs> there is a joy that's shared in bread. Mm -hmm. I like these things because they bring out the most joyful, truest nature of people, where we can allow people to walk around with pumpkin hose and knight's armor, and they can strut their way around eating a giant turkey leg, and nobody bats an eye. But we say, you know what, y'all go ahead and do that. Because that joy is contagious. I like people who geek out about whatever it is they love. The world needs more geeks. I like John the Baptizer. He is a biblical geek. He walks about in clothing made out of camel hair with a leather belt around his waist. And his diet is not fabulous cookies filled with delightful jelly. No, grasshoppers. I like John the Baptizer because he lives fully into who God created him to be. And it's a little quirky. And it's a little weird, but it brings about something special that's well needed and well desired at that time and in every time. The world needs people to live fully into who God created them to be. And all of their geekiness and quirkiness and unusual tastes, those are the things that bring joy to the surface. Joy that's born in the very root of our being, the very core of life, the very center of that place where love is all that is, all that was, and all that ever will be. And from that root springs a sprout. And that sprout brings hope for the world. John is exactly the way God created him to be. Unusual, quirky, outspoken. He gets a lot of attention because he has like no filter. <laughs> He's unusual and unexpected. His way of being calls us to look critically at how we live fully into the way God created us. He speaks truth and he is unafraid. And not everybody likes him. When one lives into their truth, one should expect that not everyone else will appreciate that. But do it nonetheless. In today's reading, John seems to be referring to the reading from Isaiah this morning. He says that Isaiah comes upon this tree stump where a great tree once was. Isaiah sees, as we all might see, the great tragedy of a life lost, a beautiful tree that has been cut down and is no longer. And we can look with sadness upon the greatness that was once there. But Isaiah sees things differently. He sees a sprout growing from that stump. Now we all here in the western part of the continent are very familiar with this phenomenon of trees growing from stumps. 
I think it's beautiful and majestic and it speaks to us of a hope now that Isaiah felt way back then. Because just as trees used to do this in Isaiah's time, they still do it now. And they still bring with them the hope of new life that sprouts from the very depths of where all life comes from. From the source where those roots reach all the way down to that place of love that speaks to whatever has happened to that tree and says, grow, love, be what you were created to be, a great cedar, an oak. A shoot shall come out from that stump and a branch shall grow out of the roots and it will be exactly as God created it to be. Regardless of whatever has happened to that tree, Love calls that tree to still be and to still become all that God has created it to be. However weird that tree might grow, however unusual that tree might be, God says, grow. There's a shoot growing from the stump and its roots reach all the way down to the source of growth, all the way down to the source of life and love. It's a place where no destruction can reach. From this place, life springs forth, unstoppable, unapologetic, persistent. That is the nature of God. Unapologetic, unstoppable, persistent. Like a tree that grows into being what God made it to be in spite of anything else. Because God made it and made it with love. John sees the ax lying by the base of the tree. He says, the tree is ready to be cut down. That ax is going to do what axes do. But John says, it doesn't have to be that way. Look beyond what you see on the surface. Look beyond the quirkiness of someone who can pull off a Princess Leia bun hairstyle. <laughs> see the beauty love and the creativity of that person within them. There's something special in there. John says it doesn't have to be that this axe will take out this tree. There's a fire waiting to burn up the tree that can be quenched. How do you quench a fire? With what? Water. John says I come to baptize you with water. Whatever fire is threatening to burn you up, to prevent you from being fully yourself as God created you to be, John brings you a glass of cool water to put that fire out because it doesn't have to be like that. You are called to grow into your fullest self just as God created you in all your quirkiness and strangeness and unusual tastes and habits God loves you because that's how God made you. So have a glass of cool water. Quench the fires that threaten your being and your true truth of yourself. John calls us to repent, to turn back to the source of who we are. Turn away from whatever axes are there, whatever fire is waiting, turn back to your roots, to your core, to that part of you that is created in the divine love that is, was, and always will be. Be your fullest self. Grow from that place, just as that shoot grows from the stump of Jesse, just as those little nursery trees are able to form a tiny little bit of growth that will one day be as big as the tree that nurses it back to wholeness. John's appearance can be very distracting. He's someone that's not like us. He goes to Renaissance fairs. <laughs> John does things the way John feels is so much his truth and so much right for him. He found a 
and camel skin and in fact make a good coat. A leather. I found a leather belt. Very fashionable. And grasshoppers apparently are very full of protein. I don't know because that's not my truth. <laughs> but I trust that John is on point with that. Thank goodness for John and so many others who are not typical of everyone else. Thank God for the unique people among us, for the thinkers, the dreamers, the creative people, the imaginative people. Thank God for you, because you bring hope and joy that is uniquely special in a world that desperately needs hope and joy and creativity. My sisters and my brothers and my non-binary siblings in Christ, please live authentically. Live out loud. Be persistent in living fully as God created you, just as those trees were persistent in growing in spite of the axe and in spite of the fire pit. Grow anyways from that source of deep love that your roots are already attached to. Be persistent in being fully as God created you because tapping into the root of our life force, that source of our creation and health and beauty and grace, the source of love itself allows us to enjoy life in its fullest. We were made to bear good fruit. It's already there. It might be quirky fruit, it might be unique fruit, it might be unusual, unusual fruit, but it's all good fruit if it's authentic to who we are and who God created us to be. The repentance that John refers to may be, in fact, an invitation to live as authentically as possible. We get distracted by the ax lying at the base of the tree. We get distracted by the fire when John actually is preaching joy and hope, embodying creativity and uniqueness. He's preaching a glass of cool water to help us turn back to ourselves as God created us to be. And why? Because you, I, everyone watching online, all the people that we encounter in the world were made to be unique. We were made to be purveyors of joy, quirky, steampunky, and bakerly and musicianly. I just made that word up. <laughs> There's some joy. We were made to be unique and beautiful. We are made with beautiful diversity for the purpose of revealing the many facets of God's nature. No one can possibly reflect all the awesomeness of God but we each get to embody a little bit of it. And together, as a community, we reveal more and more of what God is like, the source of all creativity, the source of all joy, who is unimaginable and unattainable, but we get to catch glimpses of God in all the people that we meet, in the music that we hear, in the birds that sing, in the trees that grow, in the things that people bake, and share, and craft, and wear, and be. Style, baby. That's what God is about to do. <laughs> so, put on your best camel hair outfit. Cook up a good batch of grasshopper stew, because Jesus is coming. We want to be our best selves, because that's the good news. Amen. Amen.